What do you know about it, Chigelski? What do any of us know about anything? Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and to uh, my continuing weblog series. Uh, today, I'll be talking about uh, web languages. Let's see now. There is C, C++, um, Objective-C, um, C Sharp, uh, Java, JavaScript, uh, Scala, Haskell, Lua, Go, Swift, PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby, etc., etc., etc. Wow, that is a lot of languages. What in the world is going on? I mean, is there really a need for all those languages? Now, certainly, I'm not saying that there is one language that fits all. That there is one universal language that's directly uh, usable in every situation. After all, languages are tools, and you pick the right tool for the right job at hand. You wouldn't, for example, choose C to create a web application or Java to write a device driver. So sure, I can understand the idea of creating a language specifically for a particular kind of um, uh, task or job or new technology or something like that. But it seems to me that we're not seeing that nowadays. Nowadays, it's like, oh, wow, this feature is missing in this language. Let's create a new language. Whatever happened to uh, adding features and extensions and capability to languages by, I don't know, adding a library or some extensions or things like that? Why the need to create what I consider a vanity language just because one particular language isn't 100% applicable to your environment. For example, Go is a fantastic language. Obviously, it's based and derived from C. But it has a lot of cool features which simply don't exist in C. Go routines and, and channels and really cool concurrency and stuff like that. But did it really require the creation of a brand new language for that? I mean, after all, in the links down below, there is a really, really cool library out there called Libmill, which I'm helping a little bit with, which adds these features to C. So if you want all these really, really cool features of Go, but don't want to have to learn a whole new language, you can use it in C. And for me, that's a, one of the main reasons behind what I see is this universal growing plethora of languages out there, is that it's making people, uh, requiring them to have to learn a new language. And sometimes it's not that easy to do it. I mean, certainly there are languages uh, which are different enough that it's easy to make that, uh, that mental uh, gear change from one language to another. For example, going from C to Python. Those are different enough that you're not caught up in... When you're programming in Python, you know you're programming Python. When you're programming C, you know it's C and not Python. They're different enough um, so you don't have to constantly be judging or, or juggling between the two. But, and this isn't a rant against Go, for example, but Go is obviously similar enough to C that it's easy to pick up. But it's also different enough in a way where if you're an experienced C programmer, you find yourself doing some C stuff in Go, which really isn't possible or really isn't recommended. 
uh, and is just uh, confusing. And some of those differences, some of that confusion is based on syntax, which is designed, at least from what I can tell, to make it easier to be parsed by the compiler rather than to be easily parsed by the developer. And I certainly don't understand the rationale for that. Um, why you can't make the language similar enough that people from C can really understand it very, very easily and just make the compiler a little bit more complex or whatever to have that, uh, that confusion, that ease of parse on the compiler side rather than the developer side. Anyway, I don't want to rant on Go, as I said, so I'll skip that. Still. Now, sometimes people come up to me and ask uh, what language would I recommend them to learn if you were an up-and-coming uh, open-source developer or someone interested in coding, for example. And I don't think there's one um, universal language. As I said before, there are uh, languages or tools. But I think there is a small collection of languages which makes sense for uh, developers to know. And the first on my list, and this may not be a surprise to many, is C. Now, a lot of people deride and demone uh, C. They just don't like it. They say it's too low level or that you have to worry about uh, garbage collection or null pointers and it's a very, very dangerous language to use. But for me, I think that's actually an advantage. I think if you're a, a programmer and you aren't aware of those pitfalls, if you aren't aware of the interaction between the language and the underlying hardware that you're programming against, um, you're going to make mistakes. You're going, not going to be the best, most proficient, most efficient developer that you could be by not being aware of that. So even though I started in C, I still think it's a great language for everyone to start in. I think that if you are a proficient and efficient C programmer, you can take up and learn almost any other language out there um, and do so very, very well. So even though it may not be the easiest language to pick up, I would definitely say look at C simply because it, um, it creates the right uh, mindset in a professional developer. Another great language is Python. I use Python for everything from large, enterprise size applications to small scripts that I would normally have used Perl for, for example. Uh, Python has a, uh, a great syntax, uh, a huge collection of extensions and libraries um, and resources that you can use so you're not constantly uh, uh, recreating the wheel in a lot of applications. It's a fun language to learn. It helps you out as a developer, but it doesn't hold your hands behind your back as well. It doesn't prevent you from doing something that you want to do. It doesn't pretend to be smarter than you are. So I think uh, Python is a great language as well. And finally, um, especially if you're interested in web applications, I would definitely choose PHP. Now PHP is also, as C is, uh, derided by a lot of people. People love to hate PHP. And I'm certainly not saying it is the most consistent language in the world or that it doesn't have um, some deficiencies or, or things of that nature. Um, you know, the inconsistency in function naming, for example, or parameter orders when you're calling functions and methods and things like that. I mean, uh, those are certainly a concern. But the reason why I really like PHP is it is very, very good at what it is designed to be, a web application language. And it is unabashedly proud of itself. It knows that it has a lot of capability. 
it knows that in a lot of ways its learning curve is 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 very very low that's a language you can pick up very very easily very very quickly um, and as long as you're willing to work around some of the deficiencies of the language you can do some really really great fantastic work with it um, the other thing I like about it too is that and this is the reason why it is um, does have those inconsistencies is it really is a community driven language um, the features um, the uh, capability that it has is because there were people who wanted that kind of capability in the language and it was very, very easy to fold that in the language itself, which goes back to my initial point of why recreate a language when you can basically enhance or extend the existing language to suit your needs. And PHP is a great example of that. Maybe not a great example of being able to do that with a consistent singular vision, but it's the kind of language that just shows that um, a language can, can grow and change without requiring developers to learn something from scratch at the very, very end. So uh, I, I really, really like PHP, you know, simply because of the, um, uh, the example that it provides as well to all of us as far as languages are concerned. So what should you take away from this semi, semi uh, uh, rambling rant about languages? Well, first of all, as I said before, languages are a tool. There is no one universal language that, that, that makes sense for, for every application. So be sure to choose the right language uh, for, your, for your application. Secondly, try to avoid the hype behind languages out there. Don't choose a language simply because it's hot or it's cool uh, as a corollary to point number one. Pick it if it's the right one for the choice. And the final point is, as a community, let's do what we can to avoid this proliferation of vanity languages out there. Let's work on improving the languages that we have instead of creating new languages for people to learn. It makes a lot more sense to allow existing developers and coders to continue their work and give them additional tools rather than new tools. New tools make sense when the old tools are just simply not viable anymore. Um, that's what it makes sense to build a new language from scratch. That's what it makes sense to create a new language for a whole new technology area. But just to do it to do it, to force people to have to learn a new language uh, for some features or capability which could be easily or even not so easily folded into an existing language. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a mistake that really um, you know, is a disservice to the existing developers out there already. Um, so let's do what we can Let's, uh, let's keep the good fight going. Let's enjoy uh, the languages that we have. And let's just have fun coding. Bye-bye now. Thanks.